Yeah, so what are you like? What's your opinion on the, the 50 mil offer? Do you think it's bogus? Do you think it was a promotional, uh, promotional tool? Do you think it was legit? Like, who's in the right? Who's in the wrong here, man? Yeah, for me at first, I thought it was like a legit offer because, like, that's what AJ was calling for in his most, like recent interviews. But, like, the way it's kind of played out, it's got your question in, like, was it a genuine offer? Was it not? With Eddie Holmes, like, stance on the whole, like, they want them to accept the offer before a contract shown kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but with so, 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 with Joshua saying, uh, look, come to me with 50 mil, when you get 50 mil, we'll talk. Like, is it not, is that not what's happened then? Like, because Deontay's team have come to Eddie Hearn, like, Deontay's emailed him directly and said, look, 50 mil offer. Like, at first I thought, okay, that's definitely a publicity stunt because you, you haven't got any proof to it. Then when I saw that there was more to the email from um, Shelley Finkel, I um, I don't know. I kind of took a step back a little bit. I'm not to say that I don't agree with Eddie Hearn's team. I probably agree with that side a bit more. But there obviously is more to it that's not being discussed. Like nobody asked, nobody asked Hearn to show the email. I feel like he should have shown or at least quoted exactly what was written in the email because I feel like it's a bit misleading what he made out of the email said opposed to what, the email actually said, which Shelley Finkel put online. There was more to it. Yeah, what Finkel said kind of makes sense. Like, I don't know about contract negotiations in terms of boxing, but, um, yeah, like, why would you... Like, Finkel's basically saying, like, I made you the offer, accept it, then we can talk about the finer details in negotiations. So I, I kind of get that stance as well. Um, yeah. That makes me kind of think that it is a real offer, but... I don't know, man. Who, who do you believe? Because Hearn's very vocal. Like, every two days we're seeing an interview on whether it be IFL or Seconds Out or whatever. Yeah. Um, and he's quite vocal about, like, the negotiation and the way they're playing out and whatnot. Um, so, I don't know. What do you think? Who, who... I think I believe jo- the Joshua side more because it's kind of like, why would anybody just accept a 50 mil offer? But how Shelley Finkel's making it out is, like, He's making it out like, look, man, this is how it always goes on. Like, why are you acting for the cameras? Like, you don't know how it goes on. You verbally accept the you verbally accept the offer, and then you go into the finer details of things. Um, I didn't really think about it that way until I saw his take on that. But I can't see how at least get into a discussion about it, like the meeting which was meant to be planned on on Wednesday or Thursday. I can't see how that like shouldn't have happened. That should have still happened. He should have. Deontay's team should have still turned up if they were serious. That's the thing that's giving it, um, that's making me think that it probably was a publicity stunt because they weren't willing to speak about it, uh, at least. Um, but they did kind of say, look, you either accept it or don't accept it. Then they kind of made that apparent from early. But I'm not sure, man. I I I, I tend to agree with Eddie Hearn on this. It's kind of like a, just using common sense, it's like, bro, if anyone's going to make an offer of that magnitude, you want to at least find out where it's coming from, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I guess especially with, um, like we said before about how Hearn's opening offer was a 12.5 million, so clearly there's a, like, a big dearth in evaluation between the two camps of what the fight's going to pull in in terms of money, because like, what Hearn was offering is half the amount, technically speaking, of um, what Shelley Fink was put on the table. Like, is it even a hundred million dollar fight? Like, yeah, because they're both not. They're both not draws not, in America. Like, it's not quite. <clears throat> Deontay's not a draw in America. Neither is Joshua yet. So, and then, and Deontay's team were talking about we want it to happen in the states. It's like, bro, that can't. It's not going to be a big money fight. Like, it's not going to draw in the numbers that it's meant to draw in. If it's for one person to be paid fifty mil. Um, but then on Joshua's side, it's like you said, if he can bring you fifty mil, you'll fight him. He's offering you. He's apparently offering you fifty mil. So there should at least be a verbal, um, agree a, like agreement there or something in place. He said to you, here's the fifty mil. So I don't know. I mean, I, I understand them wanting proof of where it's coming from. And it's not like if Joshua says, yeah, I'll take the fight if if you guys can bring me the fifty mil. It's not like if he says that, then he's he's tied into a, a written contract that that make, that forces him to take the fight with like 
all the details going against him and all that sort of stuff. It's not that. I think it's more accept it verbally so that they can get into the negotiation stage. At least that's what that's the that's the explanation that Deontay's team are going with in it. Whether that's whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that's what they're going with. I think there's more Yeah, it seems to be the case. But the thing I'm happy about is that there's at least discussion going on in it. Like we're getting to a stage now where they're they're talking about it. Like there's discussion going on which means that inevitably the fight will get made. Like there's there's been contact made on either side in it. Like they they've spoken yeah, at so, least. So what do you make of this whole negotiation playing out in the in the public eye? Like it's not something we normally see in terms of like boxing fights getting made. Like Canelo Golovkin, that fight was just made. Like you just hear about it, but boom, that's it. But like this is like a drawn out process in the public eye, like social media and whatever else means. Like what what do you think of all that? Um yeah, it's interesting man, because like you said, we don't get that. Even in boxing, you don't really see it. I mean, you hear about the the astronomical figures that boxers get paid, but you don't really hear about the different terms and the contract negotiation involved. I feel like um, it's just part and parcel of coming into 2018, man. Everything's out there in public. Everything's on social media, and it will probably see more and more of this sort of stuff, to be honest with you. We'll probably see more of it um, in the near future, but... Uh, whether it can hurt the sport, I don't know. I don't think I don't think it can hurt the sport. I feel like if anything, it means the fans get more of it what they want because you there's it bridges the gap between fan and promoter in it. And for a long time, from the from I don't know, you could say the the, the early two thousands onwards, we've kind of had a mismatch of, or people became a bit, a bit disillusioned with boxing, where the best fighters took a long time to fight each other. I feel like social media might help bridge that gap, man. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see the positive side of things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of it, man. Like, I don't know. I don't need to know. I don't care about splits. I just want to see the fight made. Mm. Like, like that, the, that doesn't really concern the fan. Like, the fan doesn't really get anything out of that. Like, we can just like we can still see big fights get made as we've seen with um. Like Golovkin Cano, or the first one anyway, without all this um fanfare around it. Yeah, so I, yeah, I don't know. As long as it gets made, I guess that's the most important thing. Yeah, uh, the contract negotiations for this, I believe, uh, the offer that Deontay's team are trying to make is you get fifty mil, and then we get a percentage, which they've yet to say on, um, on the revenue that the fight generates, basically. But. It, Giving one fighter fifty mil, you got to be very confident to think that you're going to get anywhere near that just off the revenue, man. So, how do you see that fight going? I've got it at sixty forty in AJ's favor. Um, a hard one, man, because obviously both of them got big power. Like we know, what you're saying, Danny Garcia calls it the eraser that Wilder's got. Yeah, yeah. So, if, if he lands with that on AJ, but I feel that changes the whole fight, we're going to see AJ in completely different like waters to what we've seen him in before. Like, yes, Klitschko hits hard, but I feel like it's like, a, it's like getting hit of a train. It seems like that, that white hand from a welder. Yeah, man. I've heard it called bare things now. The eraser, the equaliser, the touch of death. Like, I've just heard that right hand's called everything. But like Travis was saying earlier, like the fact that he's knocked everybody out that he's fought with the same right hand is madness. I'd still give, um, on paper, looking at it objectively, I'd still give the edge to Anthony Joshua just because he's uh, he's the tidier fighter and the fact that like he, I could see him potentially going in cautiously in that fight and just getting a points, points decision. Um, but if anybody's getting knocked out, I think it would be Joshua as well in that so in the same breath, I think like the the person who's most likely to get knocked out would be Joshua, mainly because he doesn't really move his head much, and um, Wilder has the best one-two or the most devastating one-two at least when he connects with that one-two. It's known to do damage in the heavyweight division. So um, based on that, I would say my money. If I was a betting man, my money is going on Joshua. But if I was to put any money on the, on a knockout, it would be for Wilder. Uh, yeah, but um, see, I would have, I would have agreed with you before the Wilder fight about um, you know AJ sticking to a game plan 
and then like just sort of talking or just chipping away at Wilder. But we see we saw a bit of a different Wilder in the Ortiz fight in terms of he was willing to wait before he threw that big right hand until was it round six? We didn't really see it round five or round six. So I think he can bring a tactical side to it as well, which is what makes the fight so interesting. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I feel like uh, you have to um, like lure Joshua into a false sense of security, somewhat like make him a bit overconfident, make him make him feel like he's winning the fight, and then and then Wilder probably throw the right hand. But I, I I don't see it being like a a super fast start where both men are just swinging like a lot of people have said. Like it's is the moment that fight starts, it's just going to be on. I don't think it'll be like that. I feel like they both respect each other's um, power and. And I feel like that will probably be more the most visible thing straight away during that fight. But yeah, man, I'm I'm excited for that one. I feel like that's gonna happen soon. That's either gonna happen, if not by the end of this year, then by uh sp- by spring latest next year. So within a year, I think that fight will be here. I don't mind waiting personally enough for them to each have one more fight. Uh, but you know, I still want to see it. I still want to see that fight. It's just no way near. Yeah. It's nowhere near the waiting time that we waited for Pacquiao Mayweather. So I still got to be patience, you know. Yeah, definitely. I do get the feeling that we might have a bit of a wait with um Brazil. Dominic Brazil's camp coming out and saying they're fighting Wilder in August. Yeah. Um, so that's another spanner to the works as well in terms of how serious the Wilder negotiations or the side of the negotiations are in terms of this fight getting made. Yeah, man. I feel, um, yeah, I just feel like it will, that fight is needed as well, just on a, on a heavyweight, like, to, be, to have a heavyweight champ in 2018, bro, like, that, we ain't had anything like that in such a long time, it will just give, the heavyweight division's always been the, it's always been the, the figurehead, it's always been the poster for boxing, isn't it? So, for a long time, we've not really had that, we've had, we've had welterweight, we've had middleweight, we've had light heavyweight sitting in the thunder, and, um, Getting an undisputed heavyweight champ will just do so much for the brand of the sport as well, man. Like, we get to finally know who's the best. Number one, two, we can we can legitimately say the baddest man on the planet is this man. Number three, like the kids will get like the kids, the next generation of fighters will get excited having an undisputed heavyweight champ. It's just there's so many things that go with it. The like branding, marketing wise, just the identity of the sport that go with becoming the undisputed heavyweight champ. Even Floyd wasn't undisputed at welterweight, do you know what I mean? So, um, there's a lot that comes with that, man. But, yeah, I can't wait for that fight. Can't wait for that fight. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, man. 